Ooh. Rashard Lee getting hit. Rashard Lee got jacked up. up. Number four, Raiders and Panthers. Jamal oh, Broussard here. leveled by Tim Johnson. Take another look at it. Jamal Broussard taking oh. it. Oh. Tim Johnson. Oh. Jamal Broussard oh. got Stop. jacked up. up. Number three, the Lions and the Redskins. Aza King. Oh, hit oh, oh, coming oh, over the middle by Ryan Clark. And look at this hit. Oh, might as well catch it. Ouch. Aza King, boy, you got jacked up. up. Number two, Jake Plummer. No. Kyle oh, Johnson. Oh, oh. Kyle Johnson got jaked up. <laughs> but he also got compliments of Jake Plummer. Oh, man. He got jacked up. And number one, Jets Bills are going to end it on special no. teams. Brian Ooh. Mormon, the punter, running down. Oh, the <laughs> the Mont Jordan. Take another look oh. at it. One more at full speed. Oh. Right there. Let's watch him walking off the field. Take this deep breath. Brian Mormon, you got jacked up. Boy, did he get jacked TJ, up. TJ, last week you got Jacked up! <laughs> thanks, TJ thanks. went against us. Hey, thanks, dude. And he lost. I'm just saying. Thanks, dude. The rest of us kind of happy. All right, lead pipe Tommy. lock. You see the standings. Jaws. Oh, yeah. Tonight. The pipe is still here with me. I'm going with the Indianapolis Colts tonight with the lead pipe lock. Michael? I'm, I'm taking Indy. Indy at home, way too much. Minnesota without Randy Moss. I'm, well, thank you, Tom. I'm going with the Colts as well. And, and I'm never going with them again. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What about last week? I'm here. never going with them again. <laughs> you can't fool me with one game. All right, hey, Tom, go ahead. Cross your arms again. Yeah, you go pop. Fine. Game. I'm not going to go with them no matter okay. what happens. Man. Fine. <laughs> if you all want to see a bunch of offense, <laughs> with it. turn over and watch the ABC Monday Night Football game. Colts and Vikings over under 85 points. Stewart, <laughs> PJ, Michael, Jaws, we're out. <laughs> Tom said to go. of Monday Night Football on ESPN. It is the Minnesota Vikings and Indianapolis Colts. Mark Brown with you for now from our ESPN studio. Now Michaels, John Madden, and Michelle Tafoya will have the call from the RCA Dome. Well, Dante Culpepper leads the Vikings in their NFL top-rated offense, accumulating over 430 yards per game. They have been prolific, to say the least, but lately they've fallen on a bit of hard times. Last week, they hosted the Giants, and, of course, they didn't have Randy Moss at their disposal, and it showed rare mistakes from Dante Culpepper, including a couple of interceptions. Culpepper's quarterback rating dropped by about a dozen points after this one, and his team was losing 34 to nothing at home in the fourth quarter. They were able to come up with a couple of scores late, but this Viking offense did not fire on all cylinders the way it is normally used to. And we can show you some statistical numbers that show just what kind of drop-off we're talking about in Dante Culpepper's play when he doesn't have Randy Moss. The points aren't necessarily the big thing to look at here. Look at the yards, 350 plus yards a game when they had Moss in the first five games, down to just 212 passing yards per game without Moss and a drop-off of three and a half touchdown passes a game to just one. Still in the season, 20 touchdown passes and just five interceptions for Culpeppers. Now, Peyton Manning leads a Colts offense that is equally prolific. It is certainly equal of the Vikings offense. And given that they have a healthy running back, the same guy all year long in Edron James, there's maybe a little more balance to this offense. And of course, his number one target is Marvin Harrison. The two of these guys are poised to get in the record books as the most prolific passer receiving combo in NFL history. And of course, it's not just Mr. Harrison, you saw Reggie Wayne there, who's a big deep threat as well. 
also the tight end Pollard and uh, Brandon Stokely also can catch the deep ball as well. Any way you slice it statistically, Culpepper and Manning are the top two quarterbacks in the NFL. Now, Tom Brady may have something to say about that stat of victories, but statistically, these two guys are one, two in all of the big categories. Yards, touchdown passes, and quarterback rating. The Vikings look to extend their lead in the NFC North while the Colts go for a piece of first in the AFC South. That's coming up on Monday Night Football. A presentation of Monday Night Football from the home of the Indianapolis Colts, the RCA Dome. The Colts get ready to host the Minnesota Vikings. Should be a wild shootout as two of the league's best offenses and they also have two of the world, the league's worst defenses as well. Marvin Harrison will be looking to capitalize the number one target of Peyton Manning over the course of their careers together. And uh, these two guys are uh, poised to break the record for uh, most career receptions between a quarterback and receiving tandem. And they're not nearly done, but together for seven seasons. 39 catches on the year for Harrison. Uh, Yardage-wise, though, Reggie Wayne and Brandon Stokely actually have more yards receiving then does Marvin Harrison but clearly those two guys benefit from the dangerous nature of Marvin Harrison and the fact that he often draws two defenders and uh, Harrison needs two receptions to get to 800 and if he gets these two tonight it'll do it in his 131st game which will be far faster than did Jerry Rice so it tells you the kind of company that he is in and uh, he has been a spectacular receiver and he is playing with uh, obviously one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL in Peyton Manning now here's Randy Moss and we go back to week six when uh, he injured his hamstring and he was ready to suit up for a couple of games in a row, but really did not make any impact. It was uh, against New Orleans in week six, a game that the Vikings won 38-31. Moss had a touchdown grab in that game, but did get pick up the injury. Here's a look at where he stands on the Vikings career receptions list. Moss had 551 receptions. He's still got a long way to go to catch Chris Carter, who is the most prolific receiver in Vikings history and one of the top in all of NFL history with over 1,000 catches as a Viking. He also has a number with the Philadelphia Eagles. So the Vikings look to get back on the winning track. It'll be a tough one as they take on the Colts in Indianapolis. The opening kickoff is coming up. The classic teams, the classic moments, the classic rivalries. Join us as we relive the most historically renowned matches in the history of the game. The history of cricket continues with the classic matches. Wednesday on ESPN. The classic teams, the classic moments, the classic rivalries. Join us as we relive the most historically renowned matches in the history of the game. The history of cricket continues with the classic matches. Wednesday on ESPN. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Monday Night Football on ESPN about ready to get underway from Indianapolis and the RCA Dome. An offensive shootout is no doubt on the way. The Vikings and the Colts ready to kick it off. We'll get you out to Al Michaels. Have not gone to a Super Bowl, but they've been close since coming to Indiana. Hunter Smith is the new kickoff man. He's wrested that job from Mike Vanderjat, the place kicker. And the opening kickoff comes down to the 12-yard line. Kelly Campbell, one of the Minnesota wideouts, comes straight up the middle. 
to the 34 yard line and let's take a look at the Minnesota offense. Dante Culpepper, Central Florida. Michael Bennett, Wisconsin. Ontario Smith, Oregon Mighty Ducks. Marcus Robinson, South Carolina. Nate Burleson, Nevada Wolfpack. Jermaine Wiggins, East Boston. Brian McKinney, Miami Hurricanes. Chris Lewinsky, Indiana. Matt Burke, Harvard. Dave Dixon, Arizona State. Matt Dawson, San Augustine High School. And the Vikings open with Michael Bennett and Ontario Smith both in the backfield, and the game begins with a fumble. Not unusual for somebody like Cole Pepper. And the ball is all the way back inside the 10, and finally the Vikings have recovered the ball, but the line of scrimmage was the 34, and they recovered it the 6. Dante Culpepper averaging over a fumble per game in his career, and that is a 28-yard loss on the first play of the game. You know, you want to come out, you want everyone fired up, you want them all emotional and everything, and sometimes you get too fired up, you get a little too tense, and you can't even get the opening snap off. And that's exactly what happened to the Minnesota Vikings. And then the Colts, they're so excited, they can't even jump on the thing. And Brian McKenney just does come up with the recovery. 28 yards back of the line of scrimmage. And now to give themselves some breathing space, they give it to Ontario Smith out to the 11-yard line. Dante Culpepper on a per-game basis with more fumbles than anybody in the history of the NFL. And that's the way this game begins tonight. And I can't remember seeing a 28-yard look on a fumble in a long time. Right, but usually those fumbles on Dante Culpepper come when he has the ball in his hands and he gets hit. That one, I don't know that that was his fault. I don't know that that wasn't the center's Matt Burke's fault because it didn't look like he got the ball up there. Third and 33. It sounds like an intersection in New York. Toyed and toity toyed. All right. He didn't get the ball up there. Culpepper was moving out. From the 11 yard line. Culpepper throwing underneath, and that is caught by Mo Williams. And that's a nice game, but there may not have even been a play because a timeout was called by snap. Minnesota. Timeout. Minnesota. Called by the coach. Called by Tice. It was so loud, nobody heard it. Third and 33 when we come back. Yeah. <laughs> to the Breeders' Cup World Thoroughbred Championships, where Ghost Zapper dominated the $4 million classic. Jockey Javier Castellano led the charge as Ghost Zapper cruised to a three-length victory with a record time of 1 minute 59 seconds. ESPN celebrates Javier Castellano and Ghost Zapper, our Athletes of the Week. ESPN presents the best of Friday Night Fights. In 2001, Julio Cesar Gonzalez was undefeated and in search of a world title bout. He'd get his chance later that year after facing Julian Letterlow in a 12-round bout. Friday on ESPN. The classic teams. The classic moments. The classic rivalries. Join us as we relive the most historically renowned matches in the history of the game. The history of cricket continues with the classic matches. Wednesday on ESPN. Who will prevail in the African Champions League semi-finals and will it be an all Tunisian final? Join Tommy Smith, Janusz Mahalik and me for the next edition of ESPN Soccernet Press Pass on Friday right here on ESPN. Opening moments of our Monday Night Football offering, the Vikings and the Colts. Vikings football deep in their own territory. Almost disaster striking on their very first play of the game. They fumbled the snap between the center and Culpepper. Lost 28 yards. Hardly the start that one of the top offenses in the league would like, but we'll see if they are able to dig their way out of it. Got a key third down coming up, a third and 33. Let's go back to Al Michael. Uh, third and 33. The Vikings offense first in the league, the Colts defense last, but let's see what the Vikings have in store on third down and 33 out of the shotgun. 
And it's a simple run on an inside give, and they give it to Michael Bennett. So once you begin with a 28-yard loss on first down, all you want to do is basically get a little bit of yardage back, give your punter some space. And I open the game by saying it's the cushiest job, John, in the Dome tonight. And wouldn't you know it, a minute and a half into the game, we have a punt. But who would have thought that the game would start with that 28-yard uh, loss fumble? But right. they did get some of it back. I mean, I think that was a smart play. You know, you got yourself in trouble, get yourself out of a little trouble, and get in this punting situation. The Aussie Darren Bennett came from Australia, where he played Australian rules football to punt. Former Charger Brad Pyatt will run it back. And it's a low short kick. And it takes an indie bounce going sideways, and the Colts will take over near midfield good position in which to start for Peyton Manning and let's take a look at Peyton and his mates tonight Peyton Manning University of Tennessee Ed and James the U Richard Wayne the U Marvin Harrison Syracuse University Marcus Pollard Bradley University Dallas Clark Iowa Tari Glenn UC Berkeley Rick Moline Idaho Vandals Jeff Saturday North Carolina Tupa Pickle Michigan State Ryan Dean Northern Illinois to the U's, that is the University of Miami for Wayne and for Edrin James. Ball at the 49 after a 28 yard Darren Bennett kick. And they begin with what they call their stretch play as Manning gives it to James and a nice run on first down, a gain of about seven. He steps out at the 42 yard line. You know, and Peyton Manning really has to stretch to get that ball to Edrin James. Edron James is running from the right hash mark. Now his point to run to are the numbers. You see, he's going at that angle, run, running out there to the numbers. So Peyton Manning has to come flat and really, really stretch out to get that ball to Edron James so that he can get out on that corner. Colts, as everybody knows who follows this game, run a lot of no huddle, almost exclusively no huddle, which doesn't necessarily mean hurry up. Second down and one from the 42 yard line and it's James again breaking free past the line of scrimmage inside the 30 to the 27 yard line stopped by Antoine Winfield and Corey Chavis after a gain of 15. It starts off the right side there back going Ryan Deem you're going to see the right tackle here right there this is a good block right there and that's what starts the hole. You see, boom, he gets his guy moving backward to the side, and that lets Edron James run off that block. Ball to the 27-yard line. Straight give this time. James again, and they're shredding the Minnesota defense early as they take it to the 18-yard line. So James again. James has carried three times. For 33 yards, a lot of a lot of toyed and toity toys tonight already. Well, you know how many times he carried the second half uh, last week. He didn't carry the ball once. And Peyton Manning and Tom Moore were both saying the other day that they want to start off this game establishing the run. And I'll say they're doing it now. A quick snap. James again to the short side of the field, and he picks up the first down. He's taken down by Keith Newman, the outside linebacker at the 15. It's a first down for the Indianapolis Colts. See, and that was that stretch play again. You look at Edward James, and he, he's on this hash mark. Now, his angle is going to be right towards the numbers. You see the numbers right here, the 20? He's taken at that angle. Peyton Manning has to stretch to get the ball out to him. It's a little easier into the close side of the field. Minnesota tried to call a timeout, and they did get it. You could see it the, at just before the snap. The defensive end rose up and asked for timeout. So think of this. We played four minutes, 23 seconds, and Minnesota's been forced to use two timeouts. It's been that sort of start for the Vikings. Each week, each battle of the quarterbacks, seven runs, no passes. That'll change. The quarterbacks are yet to come. They're, they set up this running game, you know, so that they can play action and get the big play. I wouldn't be surprised to see a play action right here. Colts have run the ball in their first four plays. It's been James on each occasion for 37 yards. 
and he gets it again and this time the Vikings are equal to the task stopping him first was E.J. Henderson 56 the middle linebacker what the Colts do that's interesting is is this no huddle thing as you said Al it's not a it's not a hurry up but Peyton Manning gets three plays from the offensive coordinator Tom Moore he gets two runs a run right a run left and a pass he looks at the defense and then decides which of the three he's going to run. Now Manning sets up in the shotgun. Something he does with great frequency. Second down and 11. Peyton looking to his left, throwing out there. Caught by Wayne, cutting to the inside. And Wayne, who is really coming on, he's the number two receiver to Marvin Harrison. Reggie having a great year. He's about a yard shy of the first down, third and one. Yeah, he felt the pressure. You're going to see Keith Newman, 52. He comes free off that side that Peyton Manning is throwing to. He sees him coming free. Knows right now, I better get this thing out of my hands. And he delivers it perfectly to Reggie Wayne. Third and one now at the five yard line. Harrison's caught 39 passes this year. Wayne is next to 35. And then there's Brandon Stokely at 34. Manning more than ever really spreading it around. Throwing and the receiver falls down but makes the catch. Marvin Harrison falling down and somehow made the catch beating Winfield on the play for the touchdown. It looked like and Antoine Winfield it looked like he was going to get an interception. Here's Marvin Harrison right here. He's running the slant there. He tries to get to the inside. Winfield did hit it and tip it and tipped it right into Marvin Harrison. But now now they're going to call it after initially calling it a touchdown. The other official comes in and says no. And as you can see he did not have possession. He did not have possession. Not even worth a challenge. It's fourth down and one from the five yard line. And they go for it here. Giving up the field goal and winding up with a touchdown to Reggie Wayne. He beats Brian Williams, and so after the crowd began to prematurely celebrate on the initial touchdown call, the pass incomplete, and Tony Dungy says, we've got to go for seven. Forget the three, and they get it. I was watching him practice this play the other day, and what they do is they throw it to his back shoulder. Instead of leading him up over, he just throws it behind him. Reggie Wayne starts like he's going on a fade and just kind of stops and comes back. That isn't something that just happened. That's something that they really work on. Mike Vanderjat for the point after. So they start with James running it. Then Manning throws two passes to Wayne. 909 left in the quarter. And the Colts are on top early. 7-0. The Champions Tour presents the SAS Championship presented by Forbes. Preston Wood Country Club in North Carolina played host to this year's SAS Championship. Coming into the event, no one was hotter than Craig Stadler. Last year's Rookie of the Year has won his last two starts on tour and entered the final round of the SAS with a four-stroke lead. Stadler's final round, 6-under, 66, helped him set the tournament scoring record at 17-under par. He became the first player in more than six years to win three straight tournaments. Since turning 50 in June of 2003, Stadler has eight victories, including five this season, and ten top tens on the Champions Tour in only 18 events. Congratulations, Craig Stadler. The 2004 SAS Championship presented by Forbes Champion. ESPN presents the best of Friday Night Fights. In 2001, Julio Cesar Gonzalez was undefeated and in search of a world title bout. He'd get his chance later that year after facing Julian Letterlow in a 12-round bout. Friday on ESPN. The classic teams. The classic moments. The classic rivalries. Join us as we relive the most historically renowned matches in the history of the game. The history of cricket continues with the classic matches. Wednesday on ESPN. Next 
week we go to Texas the Dallas Cowboys in action on Monday night taking on the Philadelphia Eagles losing for the first time this season yesterday to Pittsburgh so Philadelphia goes to Dallas the resumption of that tremendous rivalry next Monday night Colts eight plays Wayne with that five yard TD reception on a fourth down play James with five rushes for 36 yards. Hunter Smith, his second kickoff of the game. Kelly Campbell with tremendous speed. But can't use it there as he runs toward the sideline and is taken down. Now let's go back to take a look at the touchdown play here. And look at the clock in the bottom left corner of the screen. And you'll see this thing is going to go to zero before the snap. But no call was made. The deal on that is the back judge. The back judge looks at the clock down in the end zone. And then he looks down to see if the ball has been snapped. So there is a tiny lag between the time he looks at the clock and looks down. And it works to the benefit that time, that little lag of the Indianapolis Colts, because it could have been delay of the game. This is Ontario Smith on first down, and he picks up about nine yards. And it's second down and one. The center of the Vikings right now, Matt Burke, is our man who's mic'd up tonight. Normally when I screw up a snap, we end up winning. <laughs> so that so that was his fault. It was it was the first snap of the game, and like I said, everyone comes out a little excited and sometimes too excited, and those things happen. Ontario Smith it would take a guy from Harvard to figure out something like that to try to, you know, reassess the situation and the mood on the bench. That's yeah, called spin. Absolutely, when that's right. Harvard, when you learn how to spin, <laughs> take something bad, the loss of 28 yards, and. Your team's down by seven, you spin it in. We usually win when that stuff happens. Tell you, he's a heck of a center, too. I mean, he's just not a, a guy from Harvard playing center in the NFL. He's playing center very well in the NFL. From the 36-yard line, Smith again. Let's take a look right now, since we haven't met the Colt defense yet, they're starters. Raheem Brock, Tim. Monte Regger, Texas Tech. Josh Williams, Michigan. Dwight Freeney, Syracuse. David Thornton, North Carolina. Rob Morris, BYU. Cato June, Michigan. Nick Hoffman, Fort Valley State. Bob Sanders, Iowa. Dries Bashir, Memphis. Jason David, Washington State. At secondary, will have its hands full tonight. Meanwhile, here is Smith, who's coming off a four-game suspension for a violation of the substance abuse policy. He was able to play earlier in the season because he was appealing. It did not win the appeal. So now he's back. They had Moeldi Moore, a great-looking rookie from Tulane in there. Bennett had been hurt. Smith had been suspended. But each of these guys can really do the job for the Vikings. And, and of all those backs, they like him, uh, Ontario Smith the best because they say that he's the, he's the best running back with the best moves. That's Moeldi Moore who came out of nowhere to do such a great job. But he's out with a knee right now. But Bennett has come back. He's healthy. Smith is healthy. And it's third down and two now for Culpepper out of the shotgun. And that is caught and then dropped. No, 50-yard line. Kelly Campbell went down. Couldn't corral it. And the Vikings will have to kick for the second time in the first quarter. And one thing Dante Culpepper has to get in a rhythm. And this isn't one of his better throws here. But he's trying to bring... His, his wide receiver coming back and throw it where only Campbell can catch it. Campbell didn't catch it. Darren Bennett to punt. His first kick was only 28 yards in a series on which they lost 28 on a fumble, and that's another wobbly, shaky, bad kick that goes out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Second possession coming up for the Indianapolis Colts after a 34-yard boot. Indy up 7-0. Laird Hamilton is everywhere. You just saw him in that American Express commercial. He's in the building tonight, so he goes from the water 
John to Indianapolis which is the largest American city not on a navigable waterway so there'll be no surfing for Hamilton tonight or tomorrow what would he be doing here that is a good question he's watching Manning and Culpepper and right now Culpepper 0 for 1 Manning is 2 for 3 Indy with its second possession Manning off the play fake has a lot of time and then has to check down underneath and the pass is incomplete the secondary really did its job that time as we take a look at the Viking D Kenny Mixon, Louisiana State. Kevin Williams, Oklahoma State. Chris Holvan, Boston College. Nat Desmond, Southern Cal. Keith Newman, North Carolina. E.J. Henderson, Maryland. Dante Harris Thomas, Auburn University. Antoine Winfield, The Ohio State University. Corey Chavis, Vanderbilt University. Brian Russell, San Diego State. Brian Williams, North Carolina State. Winfield, the big offseason pickup, free agent, played with Buffalo. High snap, and Manning corrals it. But the timing is off on the play, and James can go nowhere as he's tackled the 20 yard line. Kevin Williams, the first guy to, to come in. You know, that's one of the things that the Colts are trying to do. They go three wide receivers, and then they and then they get the Vikings into, into a nickel defense, and then they want to run against it. But that bad snap and that draw play didn't fool anyone. But that's a big thing now in football. You know, spread them out, and if they go nickel and take linebackers out and play with defensive backs, you run at them. If they keep their base defense in, and then you throw it. Here they have four wide receivers. On third down and 11. They rush for it, now into the outside. James makes the catch, and out of bounds he goes. So he has three good receivers in Harrison, Wayne, and Stokely, and James can also catch the ball extremely well. 15-yard pickup, first down. Yeah, and that's exactly what they did on that play, Al. They have four receivers, and you can see here they just run these two off, and they just clean out. And then here comes Edrin James, and there's no one out there. See, the, the two wide receivers just run them deep, run them off, and then Edrin James can come underneath and get enough yardage for the first down. First and 10 at the 36-yard line. Took it down to five minutes to play in the first quarter. Good start for Indy. Very poor start for Minnesota, beginning with that 28-yard fumble. 28-yard loss. James again seeing a lot of action early tonight. Edgerin James, of course, he came from the U, as he says, the University of Miami. In effect, it was a, a deal where Marshall Falk went to St. Louis. Indy used the draft pick to pick James, and he was terrific in his first two seasons, won two rushing titles. Then he got hurt. And now he, they think, they say, that he's back to pretty close to 100%. Tony Dungy said, you know, he's, he's as good as I've ever seen him, but I wasn't here before he was hurt. So he doesn't look like there's anything wrong to me, he says. Second down and five. Manning caught and appears to be a little short of the first down as Marvin Harrison makes the catch. Tackled by the rookie out of Auburn, Dontarius Thomas, and he is short by inches, third down and one. Yeah, we just see this cold offense, and you can see why they go for it on fourth down there because, you know, we talked earlier, they really don't have the defense, but but their offense is so good that they can you know, play relaxed and take chances because they know that, that if they have to get into a shootout, they're very, very capable of doing that. And they can run it and pass it. When they get you going like they're getting the mixture here, this is the toughest offense in football to defend. They're bringing the tight end down as Clark. They also bring in Mungro, who sets up as the fullback here to help pave the way for Edger and James. And he's able to turn the corner, pick up the first down and get into Minnesota territory behind Mungro and Clark. They bring those two guys in and they pave the way. They were the road graders. Peyton Manning is over there and he's saying, hurry up, hurry up. He wants Tom Moore to get him to play. And you see, this is an eye formation stretch. Now he has to get that ball out there. Again, Edron James going to the angle of the numbers and then making his cut off that. They'll run the stretch in one back like they're in right now or they'll run the stretch from eye formation but they won't run the stretch from shotgun, so this is either going to be a pass or a draw. From the Viking 49-yard line, it's a full start. That's Jerry Austin. Jerry would not have been the referee tonight. Johnny Greer has had to miss parts of two games, and they want Johnny on the mend. He has a bad leg. So with Johnny Greer now aboard to combat, Jerry Austin, one of the senior officials obviously in the league, gets to, to ref tonight's game. With Greer.
Warriors crew. There it is, Greer. The most games ref by an active referee, and Austin will be second with Tom White right behind. From the 46, it's first down and 15. Manning outside throws into the middle of three defenders, and Marvin Harrison winds up with it. 800th catch of his career. Good for 16 yards. It's put up on the board, and the crowd so salutes Marvin Harrison. Number 11 in receptions with 800. And they should, and they should salute him. Marvin Harrison, quietly one of the top players. Not only top receivers in football, but one of the top players in all of football. Now off a quick count, James to the 35-yard line, picks up a couple. Kenichi Udezi, the rookie out of USC, makes the stop, and there's a penalty. Yeah, and they always talk about, about tough receivers and tough guys and what they have to do. This this is a tough guy. When you come in there like this, and, and he's going to throw the ball right into that window, and he knows he's going to catch that ball in the window, and there's going to be three white jerseys there, and you catch it and you go in there, you are tough. And Brian Williams gave him a forearm shiver right there. At the end of the play, meanwhile, because they ran it on a quick count Minnesota had too many guys on the field 12 that's one of the big advantages of going no huddle that's why Peyton loves to to get the play early have the option of either going on the quick count or taking his time and this is James to the 32 yard line how is Marvin Harrison stacking up with some of the others we'll take a look at this in the history of the National Football League there is nobody including Jerry Rice, who's gotten to that number this quickly. Harrison at 131. It took Rice 154 games with the equivalent of a little bit more than nine and a half seasons to get to that point. You notice something those three guys have in common? None of them were showboats. Exactly. Second down and four. Reggie Wayne makes the catch. He takes it to the 25-yard line. And one of the reasons Harrison's numbers may be a little bit down this year, John, is the emergence of this guy. Yeah, and, and that's the thing that, you know, Peyton Manning knows that, too. I mean, he, he likes to get the ball to Marvin Harrison. He's his guy. Marvin Harrison is always out on the right side. So when he draws coverage, and Peyton Manning still has some pretty good options, one, of course, being Reggie Wayne. The other one is this guy right here, Stokely in the slot. He is a real threat. Hasn't caught one yet, but this year, good year for him. He's averaging close to five catches per game. Play fake. Wobbly pass, and the pass is incomplete, and Wayne is saying, where's the flag? on his held. Brian Williams with the coverage, and there is a flag. The flag is dropped at the 10-yard line. You know, Antoine Winfield plays the other corner, and, and he's, he's a very good cover guy and, and a very good corner. So most teams that play against the Minnesota Vikings will tend to stay away from that right side and throw to the left side where Brian Williams is. Williams taking over. They lost Ken Irvin, their fine cornerback, in warm-ups on opening day. Gone for the season. Achilles First injured reserve. Foul. Yeah, if you just grab it, it's garden variety, but when, when the ref says grab and twist, you know it's going to be the major variety. See, and there's Brian Williams. He's starting to he's starting to bail out there. He gets his hips turned, and, and then Reggie Wayne can run that out on him. He makes a pretty good turn there. I really, I really didn't see it, but I guess he did it. I saw the grab. I didn't see the twist. No. I mean, maybe that was a five-yard variety that they turned into the 15-yard variety. I didn't see the chubby checker. First and 10, 29 seconds remaining. As they'll spot the ball at the 13-yard line. Colts controlling the ball for about two-thirds of the first quarter. So he audible once, and now he's audibling again, and that's the advantage of getting the play in early. Still plenty of time on the play clock as they snap it and give it to James who bounces off 
a tackler and then takes the ball just inside the 10 yard line and Edger and James who saw very little action in the past couple of weeks in shootouts especially the one in Kansas City has now carried the ball 10 times in the period well and that was one of the things that you know Tom Moore said he wanted to call early was was more runs to Edger and James to get him established and started early in this game Colts threatening leading seven nothing after one and Monday night football from Indianapolis resumes after this message and a word from our ABC station Indianapolis start the second period Al Michaels John Madden and Michelle Tafoya 7 nothing Colts these are a couple of big downs here Al for the Minnesota Viking defense is you know as good as the the offense of the Vikings is they don't play well uphill they're, they're not a good team playing from behind so if they if the thing starts to avalanche on them but they have trouble stopping it and coming back so I think it's important that they don't let this lead get more than 10 at this point here hold them to a field goal and they'll try to do it against a team that is fantastic in the red zone Indianapolis 77 percent of the time in the red zone they scored a touchdown highest in the league the league average is only 54 percent second down and eight Manning throwing caught on the outside by Pollard reaches for the end zone touchdown Indianapolis Brian Williams again is the guy involved in the play he couldn't tackle him Pollard broke out of it 10 yards for the touchdown and it's 13 nothing with the extra point upcoming you're going to see Pollard. He's the third guy in, and you have two ends, and then he runs you out. And again, they go for the two inside guys. The two inside guys run everyone off, and Marcus Pollard goes to the outside, and there's no one there until he gets to the end zone. In every Colts game this season, all eight, Manning has thrown two or more touchdown passes. That's 24 on the season. Not yet at the halfway mark. Marino's mark is 48, and Indy leads 14 to nothing. Sunday night on ESPN, that's the matchup. AFC East, the Buffalo Bills, off their win yesterday over the Jets. New England Patriots look great in knocking off St. Louis yesterday. Bills Pats. Most TD passes first eight games of a season. You can see Marino in 84, Warner in that Super Bowl year, 99, and Manning now at 24 with the rest of this game still to be played. Dan that year wound up with 48 touchdown passes, still the league mark. So at the moment, Manning is slightly ahead of that pace because there's still about three quarters to play in this one. Kelly Cable to run this back and Cable able to turn the corner and the Vikings need a big play down by two touchdowns and they just got one and a flag comes in at the end of the play on the sideline. Hunter Smith was able to knock him out of bounds. 51 yard return and maybe some more to be tacked on as it looked like Hunter Smith was out of bounds when he hit Campbell so that'll tack on a few more and give Minnesota excellent field position. That is the call, and that's exactly what Minnesota needed to get right back into this game. Right, and Hunter Smith was probably frustrated because of the lousy kickoff. Tony Dungy's son right there with Marcus Pollard. of motorsports all season long is ESPN. We take you to the Breeders' Cup World Thoroughbred Championships where Ghost Sabber dominated the $4 million classic. Jockey Javier Castellano led the charge as Ghost Sapper cruised to a three-length victory with a record time of 1 minute 59 seconds. ESPN celebrates Javier Castellano and Ghost Sapper, our Athletes of the Week.
classic teams, the classic moments, the classic rivalries. Join us as we relive the most historically renowned matches in the history of the game. The history of cricket continues with the classic matches. Wednesday on ESPN. to our Latin American audience this Thursday tune into the next edition of NFL Seminole all the latest news and highlights from the weekend's NFL action right here on ESPN back in Indianapolis where it's 14 to nothing Colts but after the run back and the penalty Minnesota has the ball at the 30 yard line Culpepper to this point in the game has thrown only one pass and it was incomplete. The ground. Smith, gain of two, second and eight, down to Michelle. Well, it was Kelly Campbell this week, Al, who told me that this Vikings team no needs to do a better job when they get behind. He said, we need to be better about not thinking we're so down and out of the game when a team gets a lead on us. Well, he said we haven't gotten there yet, but he certainly did his part with that 51-yard kickoff return. But, John, how does a team get to that point where they're better? They just have to get back into the game, and I think that's why that defensive series was so important, and now this offensive series is very important. And look at Dwight Freeney. He is the best player on their defensive unit. Dwight Freeney came right through McKinney and Lewinsky, the third year end out of Syracuse with a seven-yard sack. Here he is right here. And you see, again, he has great speed. He's looking in at the ball. He gets off right with the snap. And you see Bryant McKinney didn't have a chance. I mean, he got him, and he gets up there. His left shoulder gets right by McKinney before McKinney even gets out of his stance. Third down and 15. 16 minutes into the game, Culpepper is still looking for his first completion. is able to get away from a would-be sack. There's his first completion, but it's only to the 25-yard line. It's caught by Jermaine Wiggins. Monte Rager put the pressure on, and it'll be fourth down. Hey, that just shows how, how strong Dante Culpepper is. I mean, he just... He weighs 265 pounds, and they didn't get a first down on that play, but they did put him in good field goal position and just stay alive. I mean, and that's exactly what he does is, is you can rush him and you can get to him, but he's very, very difficult to get to the ground. 42-yard attempt now for Morton Anderson. Started the year with Kansas City in his 23rd season, and the ancient wonder puts it through. Morton Anderson now 45 years old to make it an 11 point game 14 to 3 Indianapolis. and that's the pagoda near the finish line at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway just a few miles from downtown Indianapolis lit up on this Monday night and now we come back inside my apologies by the way to Morton Anderson he's only 44 and a quarter it's Gary Anderson who's 45 you get Anderson's mixed up in time. You know, I was talking to Morton Anderson before the game and he was an exchange student here in Indianapolis and this is where he first kicked in his life. Right, born in Denmark, came here early. Pyatt 
is the returner brings it back out to the 13 yard line with 1237 to go in the half. You know here's the here's the pass tree and this is what Peyton Manning and, and Marvin Harrison come out and they do before practice and you see the the short routes and then the the middle routes the 10 to 12 yards and then the deep ones that would be the up the post the corner here you're going to see a post pattern. And you think that these things just happen, but watching them like this before the game, or watching them in practice, watching them on the bench, they're always working, they're always talking. Look how a quarterback and a receiver talk to each other with their mouth and their hands. I look at that, you know, there are different horses for different courses, and then there's McNabb and Owens in their communication. A little different. I like uh, Peyton Manning and Marvin Harris at this point. Pretty good combo. Nine yard gain on first down here for the hard working Edger and James who has now carried the ball 11 times for 58 yards. Like we said last week he didn't carry the ball once in the second half and he said after the game he didn't even feel like he played a game. He's going to feel like he played a game tonight. Second down and two from the 22 yard line. Gets it off quickly. Harrison makes the catch. Third grab for him. Here's Michelle. Al, you mentioned Marvin Harrison and, and the fact that the passes are being distributed all over this Colts offense. I talked with Marvin about that at practice Saturday. He said he's a little bit frustrated. He said, quote, obviously someone wants it that way, though he wouldn't tell me who that someone is or even suggest who it might be. He told me, I get open all the time. It doesn't come to me. I'm frustrated. I'm getting, quote, the short end of the stick, Alan John. You know, John, I wonder, is a receiver ever always happy? Well, right now, Brandon Stokely is pretty happy because he just made that catch over the middle. It gets taken down by Russell, and it's a 20-yard gain for Brandon. No, no good receiver ever thinks he's covered, nor does he ever think that anyone could cover him. And that's what Marvin Harrison has. You know, I mean, he'll say, this guy can't cover me. You know, they're not and. There's no one that can cover Marvin Harrison, but you know if the, if the coverage goes that way, if they rotate that, then, then that takes a progression and a read away from him and to someone else. Well, you can't not success, and this is an offense right now that is number two in passing, number two in total offense. It's first down and ten from the 45-yard line. I guess you know when you think about it, from time to time, even a, a running back who's a workhorse will complain. I just didn't get my. I didn't get my runs this week and and we've heard receivers and all of the great ones. I mean Jerry Rice has gone through periods like that. Yeah. You're not getting me the ball. Tonight.